guys, as some of you are aware, I'm in the progress of building a brand new 3D printer. I think it's time that I upgrade from my old Replicio Prusa i3 printer. And one of the design goals with this new 3D printer is to utilize as many of the existing components on the Prusa i3 and move them across to this frame. So that includes the heat bed, the stepper motors, the hot end of course, the electronics, the end stop switches. As much as I can, I'll pull off the old Replicio frame and install into this new frame we have in front of us here. So I'll be moving away from a Prusa i3 style design where the Y axis or the bed moves up and down. This, is, uh, this will be a core XY printer. So the print head actually moves in X and in the Y axis. And the, and the bed platform itself drops uh, in the Z axis, just like a lot of uh, brand name printers out there like the Ultimaker do. So in front of us here is 20 millimeter alum, aluminium extrusion. I've cut this to length, so the, these lengths are 350 in the X axis, and these lengths are 300 in the Y axis, and also 350 in total height. So that should allow me to print the full 200 by 200 by 200 build platform. That's what the heat bed is. And I just want to show you some of the parts that I've purchased to get to this to get to this uh, state, and also some other parts that I've had to purchase to move over to a Core XY. So to begin, I've had to purchase the 20, mil 20 millimeter T-slot aluminium extrusion, and here is uh, a one meter length, which is a general uh, length that you buy these in. Now you can get these pre-cut to size from the vendor, but I've chosen to cut these myself to save some money. Uh, I don't have a drop saw unfortunately, I've only got a, uh, a hacksaw or, or a hand saw here. So one of the problems that I had is wanting to get a straight cut and one of the ways to do that is to go out and buy one of these guys. This is a mitre box. This allows you to insert your um, aluminium extrusion within the box. This box can be screwed down to a plank of wood for example. You can then clamp the 20 millimeter T-slot aluminium to the mitre box and then using the hacksaw you can see there are slots here so these are the 45 degree slots which allow you to cut in that direction and that direction but the one I'm interested in is the ones in the middle here which allow you to cut straight down and it keeps the saw nice and true and that's how I've been able to assemble the frame that I showed you earlier. To join the pieces of cut aluminium extrusion together, I didn't want to print corner brackets because I was worried that they wouldn't provide the stiffness and rigidity that you need uh, within the frame. So I've chosen to buy these aluminium uh, furniture brackets. These are 90 degree angled. They come in bags of 10 and they are dirt cheap. And I've used these on the frame and they do make the frame rock solid once you've used these on every single corner. To join those corner brackets to the aluminium frame, I'm using M5 button head screws with a length of eight millimeters and also M5 T-slot nuts. Now, I bought these screws locally from the hardware store, but these T-slot nuts I've had to buy online. What I like about these T-slot nuts is normally the nuts are quite wide like that and you have to slide them all into the frame before assembling the frame. If you forget to put a nut in, you'll have to disassemble one part of the frame to slide more nuts in. What I like about this design is see how they're quite narrow? That allows them to be inserted into the T-slot in, in the long ways uh, direction as you can see now. And then when you insert the screw, just the torque action of turning the screw turns the nuts around as well. And the nut then clamps in long ways into the T-slot providing uh, the clamping uh, feature that these are designed to do. So these are very flexible when building a frame on a T-slot construction. For the Z-axis, I'll be moving away from M5 threaded rod and utilizing eight millimeter lead screws. Again, I bought these online. This is quite cheap. This is 250 millimeters in length. Hopefully that gives me enough height for the 200 millimeter print distance. It comes with one of these nuts on here as well. And I'll just show you this, this is pretty funky. Look, the nut can spin all on its own, up and down, get that into shot, up and down the lead screw without any help from myself. Isn't that amazing? And also I was worried that this was going to be bent in the mail, but it came packaged in plastic PVC piping. So it was very well packaged and just rolling it on the table. There is no problem at all 
with this lead screw not being straight. So I'm really happy with the way that this has come out. Now, even though this is advertised as two millimeter pitch, there's actually four threads on here. So the real pitch or each rotation of the nut travels eight millimeters. That's an order of magnitude or 10 times uh, the distance it's going to travel as opposed to the M5 nut and threaded rod that I have, which travels 0.8 millimeters per rotation. Um, I'm hoping I'm still going to have adequate uh, Z accuracy with printing with an 8 millimeter uh, pitch, I guess you could say. But one of the benefits of having quite a deep pitch is at the end of the print, I can have the print bed moving down to the very bottom and moving 8 millimeters per rotation, that's going to make that distance pretty fast. And to join the 8mm lead screw to the stepper motor, you need a shaft coupler. Uh, again, I bought this online and you can see it has the 5mm uh, diameter for the shaft of the motor here and 8mm for the lead screw up here. The lead screw simply slots in like that. It's a nice tight fit and I'll show you why it's nice and tight. I have my trusty digital uh, calipers here, set them to zero. Get that in shot so you can see. Uh, if I measure the diameter of the lead screw, look at that, it's pretty much, if I can get it level, it's pretty much bang on uh, eight millimeters. And if I look at the diameter uh, of the shaft coupler itself, get that into shot. Again, we're looking at pretty much eight millimeters on the nose. So there's not gonna be any issues with having a non-centered shaft like you do with the M5. That's gonna be perfectly centered and as it spins, it's not going to wobble around. So I'm happy with this combination. One of the other design goals of moving to a Core XY 3D printer is to keep the moving mass as light as possible. So that includes the rods for the X-axis. So instead of using the hardened steel, that I have on the Prusa i3, I'll see if I can use these aluminium rods we have here. But these aren't rods, these are actually aluminium tubes. These are only one millimeter in thickness, but 10 millimeters in diameter. And they will be paired with the bronze bushings. These are 10 millimeter bronze bushings. Uh, by themselves, they slide up and down the aluminium tubes very nicely. Um, but as I've found during my testing, these bronze bushings need to be perfectly aligned on these rods. Otherwise, they'll turn from bushings into brakes. So there's a few design changes I've had to make for the x-axis to uh, accommodate that requirement. And it seems to work just fine. And that'll be another video on actually assembling the printer and showing you the 3D printed designs that I've made to uh, keep these bushings flowing smoothly. And while I was shopping online, I picked up a few extra sundries for the 3D printer as these items were, were quite cheap. And I'd like to assemble as much of the new printer as I can before removing components off it because it's the only printer I have working. Starting off on the left hand side here, we have a new uh, Mark 7 drive gear and also uh, the Ultimaker knurled uh, drive gear for the um, extruder. So I wanted to see what the Ultimaker style of drive gear has different to the Mark 7 that I'm currently using. We have five meters of G2 belt with two 20 tooth um, uh, pulleys. We have some uh, Teflon tube. We have three uh, end stops, one for each axis. For the actual bed itself, I saw these online. These are quite cheap. Um, there's a, a long M3 screw, quite a big stiff spring and also a leveling knob. So I picked up four of those to level the print bed. Um, off eBay, I picked up uh, some uh, 10 millimeter by 20 millimeter in length uh, bronze bushings. I'm gonna see if I can move away from the uh, linear ball uh, bearings that we're currently using. So this is gonna be something interesting to try. Uh, also picked up from the same website, of course, the uh, uh, induction sensor. So I'll be installing that on my current printer first before moving across to the new printer. And also for the, uh, for the belts, for the idler sides, I picked up some of these 608ZZ bearings with the flange. However, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have bought these. I should have bought the smaller bearings with the flange, the 623ZZ. So, uh, I've ordered some 623ZZ bearings from Banggood. They're in the mail, they'll hopefully be here next week and that will hopefully then allow me uh, to actually assemble the frame and test out the X and Y drive system.